Hello and welcome to today's video. Um, I really enjoy doing these top five uh, videos at the end of the year and I particularly enjoyed doing last year's where I logged uh, the pen use that I had during the year and you know how many times I inked pens and what I inked and what I inked them with and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I really enjoyed doing that so I did that again this year uh, and uh, there's no like big surprises in this list, but this is the top five pens I've used this year. So this is based on the amount of fills I did, the incapacity, how much I used, all that kind of stuff. And what I've done is I've filled each one uh, with an ink that I used in the pen, that I enjoyed in the pen, or uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay, so let's start with number five. Number five is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. Now, this was a pen that uh, obviously I'm a big, big fan of and I love dearly. Um, if you've been following my channel, you'll have seen this pen, heard me talk about this pen multiple times. In fact, many of the pens on this list have appeared multiple times. Um, one of the reasons I love this pen, firstly, other than the, you know, I love the aesthetic of it, but I also love the material, all that kind of stuff. But one of the things I really enjoy uh, is the fact that it's actually really generous. And inks I've used in this more than any are Robert Oster, sort of like those light turquoise blues. And that's one that I've got in here today. So we have the Visconti. Homo sapiens. Bronze Age. This is with a 23 karat palladium fine nib. This is the old palladium one. Uh, and the ink I have in here is Robert Oster. Uh, and this one is Bondi Blue. So things like Blue Water Ice, Soda Pop Blue, Bondi Blue, things like that. Uh, inks that uh, I have in here quite a lot. Um, as you can see, it's quite generous in the, the flow, and for a fine, it lays down a beautiful amount of ink, and it's smooth, and it's reliable and consistent. I was, I've was i been very lucky with the two palladium uh, nibs I have from um, Visconti, that they both are so, uh, yeah, generous and consistent and all of that. I think it's a, you know, a lot of the time people get them and they kind of um, have been problematic in the past. I've had no problem with them, uh, as I said. So this is my number five uh, pen, fifth most used pen of 2021. The fourth most used pen is this. This is the Diplomat Excellence A2. It's the evergreen finish. Um, I have often used this with Diamine Green Black, which is a, an ink I really enjoy, um, but, uh, or even evergreen from Diamine. Um, but I think I put in this for a little while during the year when I had to do a lot of writing uh, was Aurora Black. Uh, Aurora Black is one of those great black inks. It's not particularly, um, you know, it, it could do with being a few dollars cheaper, um, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful ink. Um, so this is the Diplomat. Excellence A2. Um, this is a steel medium nib. They're just a uh, very well tuned, very well handled uh, Yovo nibs, beautiful nibs. Um, one thing you will see through these five pens, the thing I value more than anything is consistency and reliability. There is no use having a pen that doesn't write well first time every time. And one of the things I love about the Diplomat Excellence is firstly, that nib is beautiful. Um, I like the shape and the feel of the section. I like the weight of the pen um, and it just the balance of the pen just means that uh, it writes so easily in your hand uh, for long writing sessions, which is why Aurora Black, when I had to do a lot of writing, I was writing, you know, and I needed a, a black ink, I put it in this pen because firstly, the ink is just sublime, the pen is lovely and it made it a beautiful uh, pair. And um, once again, you can see it's fairly generous in terms of the flow, it's smooth, it's, you know, just a really, really good pen. And I honestly don't think, I know they're starting to pick up a bit of uh, attention more recently thanks to, um, I think it's luxury brands have taken them over in the, uh, one of the distributors has taken them over in the US. Um, and uh, they're starting to get a little bit more attention, but I've been a big fan of Diplomat, you know, for, you know, through the Aero, but even like the Excellence and the, the Excellence B is a pen I use a lot uh, when I'm traveling. So yeah, Diplomat make wonderful, wonderful pens. The next pen on the list is a long-term favourite of mine. It's the Twisby Diamond 580. Um, this is kind of like one of my go-to pens when I need a big ink capacity. Uh, it's sort of, it's reliable, it's wet, it's got quite a broad medium. 
but it has a good piston uh, and in capacity within it. So if you need, once again, one of those times where you need to do a lot of writing, this is uh, one of my go-tos. So the number three here is the Twisby Diamond 580. This isn't the ALR, it's the classic diamond. It's just such a beautiful pen. It's a medium again. You can see it writes very, very wet. Uh, the ink I have in this is Diamond. Another Diamond. This is Mon Botto's hat. Oh, it's the first Diamond actually, isn't it? Um, it's a beautiful purple ink. You can see like great flow, like amazing flow. It's wet, it's generous. I really, really enjoy this pen. I've always enjoyed this pen. This is the second one of it that I've had after the first one um, I left on plane. Actually, this one's a little bit wetter and broader than even that one was. Uh, and I am not upset about that at all. I just think it's a beautiful pen. It's super reliable, super super affordable, um, you know, affordable in comparison to some of the other pens um, I'm showing. Um, and it's just, you know, widely available and an easy pen and to be, you know, that they do good things, and if you get a good one, then you're gonna like this. This has been a favorite of mine for years, and uh, when a, when a pen writes like that, you can see why. The number two pen on this list today is a pen that I've well loved. I I I didn't know I would love it this much. Um, it's kind of controversial. People either love it or they don't. Uh, and uh, but it is a classic, and that is the Lamy Two Thousand. I I have a love hate relationship with Lamy a little bit. They do some amazing things the 2000 is such a great pen uh, and i think some of the things they do with like the all and safari making fountain pens um kind of slightly cool and trendy and available and all that i really enjoy and then they do things like the idios which is just i don't know anyway the number two pen is the lamy 2000 once again it's a medium nib um, and the ink I have in this is, an, yeah, this is the other diamond, diamond, and this is terracotta. It's from one of those 150th anniversary sets. So it comes in the really cool triangular bottle. This pen and ink combination, um, I kind of put this up on, uh, I think it was Instagram at one point a few months ago and, uh, raving about it, like as a pen combination, why I had never done this. And, uh, I've kept it inked up since, um, refilling it and stuff. It's a, the, the 2000 is beautifully smooth. It's a great everyday writer, super, super reliable. Um, as you can see, you know, it is relatively wet and it's re re relatively broad for a medium. It's just like these four pens, super reliable, super consistent. Um, you know what you're getting and they put down a beautiful line of ink and the inks that I put in these are inks I've had in them. And uh, really, really, yeah, I just love them. We now come to the number one pen on my top five used pens of 2020 list. And uh, this was in my top five last year as well. Um, and I think a few, couple of these were. And it surprised me last year. It didn't surprise me this year. I know how much I enjoy this pen. Um, and I know how much I have used this pen. I took this pen as one of a couple I took on tour with me to use uh, when I was touring Australia singing. And uh, it is the Estabrook Camden. Now, when this when I first got this pen and I reviewed it, I gave it a good review. I, I enjoyed the pen. Uh, there's lots about it I really liked. I like the weight, I like the size. Um, I wasn't super enamored with the nib, but uh, this is one of those pens where like, you give it a, you use it a little bit and the nib kind of like settles in. I know that sounds strange, but like, you know, you do a little bit of smoothing and you do a little bit of this and you get it and it, becomes a pen that you just have to use. And for me, this is one of those. So the number one pen this year's list is the Estabrook Camden. Even without using it on tour, where I use it like pretty consistently for four months using different, uh, I was using cartridges. Um, even, you know, without that, it was still like, in the top three used pens for this year. Um, whenever I need to do, um, you know, if, I, if I'm going, you know, to do a contract or something and I've got to, you know, sort of um, have a setup for a little while, this is one of those pens I go to because I know I'm not going to get, like, frustrated with it and want to clean the ink out. Uh, it's a medium. It's a steel medium. It's made by Schmidt. Um, 
and it's, it's very smooth. It's a little bit of feedback on it, but it, like it's not scratchy at all. Uh, the ink I have in this is Graf von Faber Castell. Um, moss green. Great ink, really, really great ink. Um, and as you can see, nice wet pen. Smooth, consistent, really good size in the hand. I love this pen in the hand. Um, it does post, uh, but it's pretty back heavy because it's quite a heavy cap. But the size of this pen in the hand, it's very comfortable, it's very ergonomic, and it's just a really reliable writer. And that's why it gets the most use. There are pens that I love that aren't on this list that like the uh pilot custom 823 or the parker dual fold stuff like that pens that i and pelican 805 pens i use a, quite a lot that i really love but they don't get as much use as this and that's because this is international cartridge converter so it's easy to clean uh with the converter it takes international international cartridges so like the graph von faber castell or the diamine you know montevede cartridges all these cartridges all fit in this pen um you know so there's a huge range of those available the nib is consistent it lays down a good line it's not super broad for a medium um like if i just do a, you know i'll show you the you know um just some lines with that and then let's go to the the twisby which is a relatively broad medium like you can see there's quite a difference between the line width between the Estabrook and the Twisby. Um, so it lays down a nice amount of ink. It's not too broad for medium, so you can get away with it. It's just a really solid writing pen. All these pens, really reliable, and that's why they get used. And that's what I value. If I'm not a collector of pens for the sake of collecting, I collect pens to use them and to enjoy them, and these pens do that for me. So let's just quickly run over those again. Let me take you back to the previous page. We've got the uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age here with Robert Oster Bondi Blue as number five. As number four, we have the Diplomat Excellence A2 with Aurora Black, a really, really good solid black ink. Number three is the Twisby Diamond 580 with Diamond Monbotto's hat. Just once again, good ink capacity, super reliable, replaceable, all those things that I love in a pen. Then we get number two, which is the Lamy 2000 with Diamond Terracotta, a, a partnership I had never thought of. And then as soon as I did it, I realized that uh, along with other inks I've loved in this pen, as things like Diamine um, Syrah, uh, Lamy Petrol, I love in this, Lamy Dark Lilac, of course, um, you know, a number of those sorts of ink colors. Actually, the Diamine 150th Anniversary 1864 Blue Black is wonderful in this. Uh, but when I put Terracotta in here, I sort of realized exactly that this is the sort of pen that ink needs to get the shading I like, and uh, it worked really, really well. And then the number one pen I've used this year is the Estabrook Camden. If you're not familiar with the Camden, there are a number of different versions of it. Go check it out. Um, it's probably slightly overpriced for what you get, but when it writes like this and you use it this much, I don't think the I think the price uh, becomes appropriate because, uh, after all the value of an item is what we put on it and with something like a pen it's not just the sum of the cost of the parts and the manufacturing there are other factors involved and the enjoyment of writing with it and the, the fact that you do use it a lot and things like that so you know for me the, this price would be worth it um so check it out check out some of the different versions and uh yeah an interesting little list i hope you found this uh, interesting and useful if you did give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that i produce and please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below now, if you've got products you think i should be looking at or if there is a way you would like to support this channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review i would really love to hear from you it's your support that makes this channel possible in the meantime have a happy and safe festive season and new year uh, and i'll see you all soon